There is an interesting point the honourable gentleman raises about. The honourable gentleman talked about courage of convictions. Could he like to tell the House why it is that a few weeks ago he voted against the government's withdrawal agreement, but on Friday he voted for it, and why he's entitled to a vote and to change his mind, but the people of this country are not allowed to change their minds and have a people's vote. I'm deeply grateful to the Right Honourable Lady for intervening. It is much appreciated because it allows me to point out to her that the Right Honourable Lady, the foremost campaigner for a second referendum, the Right Honourable Lady who favours votes at every opportunity, Except when having stood as a Conservative, oh. she does not oh. offer herself to her constituents, to them to decide oh. whether they wish to have somebody who has yes. turned their coat as their oh. member of the yeah. Parliament. Yeah. So I think that, oh, would these yeah. Yeah. If the Right Honourable Lady wishes to appeal for the Chiltern Hundreds, I will of course give way. Yeah. Well, I think it is important to record that, of course, the majority of people in Broxtow did not vote Conservative. And like all Honourable and Right Honourable members, I seek to represent all my constituents, as we should all do, putting them and our country before narrow sectarian party interests. Best it. Let them decide. Mr Speaker, what was it that the late Earl of Beaconsfield said of Mr um, Gladstone? A prolix rhetorician inebriated by the exuberance of his own verbosity. I would not dream of saying such a thing about the right honourable lady. Let me return, let me return to the motion in hand, which is discourteous to you, Mr. Speaker, does not allow sufficient time for debate. I won't give way again because others with my apologies is discourteous to you, limits time for debate, and is fundamentally against the Constitution. I get that